All right. So the 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 first idea, if you're gonna find an inverse and you have to, and you're gonna go in the opposite direction, your y values can't repeat. So your function has to be one to one. So I want to show you that if you have an x squared in the function, if you have an even power, the function is not going to be one to one. So now how would you show it? Well, very simple. You want to pick two different x's, two different x's. And you got to be smart about it. I mean, I'll pick, uh, let's, let's do two. And then you have to pick another one. I'm going to pick two different x values and show that they give me the same y value. And that's going to prove that it's not one to one. But how? So first, I'm going to plug in this dude. So replace with just two first, right? Take two, put it in for x. So you get two times two is four. So you get y equals four. Unfortunately, my y and my four tend to look the same. I try to make my y loopy. Now I'm going to plug in the second x. But the same thing is going to happen. That's the whole point of having an even power. Negative two times negative two is a positive four. You still get the same thing. You get eight minus four, so you get four. Well, one to one means the y values don't repeat. You never get the same y value twice, okay? The y values do not repeat, but I just showed you they repeat. <laughs> I took two and I took negative two and I got the exact same y value. I have just shown that it's not one to one. This can't happen. I can't get the same y value twice for different numbers that I plugged in. So this is all you have to do to show it to me. Pick two different numbers for x that will give you the same y value. And then you've shown that it's not one to one. The y values are, the, the y values did repeat and they're not supposed to repeat. So then this, this is all you have to do for me. Two different numbers, same y value. And then you've shown me that it's not one to one. All right, so the first step for finding the inverse is to replace f of x with y. I mean, f of x is y, so not a big deal. Now, this is the important, the whole, this is like the most important step of the whole thing. Everywhere you see x, you have to put y, and everywhere you see y, you have to put x. So basically, just trade them. And now, you solve for y. So get y alone on that side. So first I have to subtract 4, right? So you got to write x minus 4. Don't do nothing dumbass here and tell me that this is 4x or negative 4x, right? I mean, this is x take away 4. So you can't write 4x or minus 4x. Now I have to divide by 5, which knocks that out. So I get y cubed. I don't, I don't like this. I'm going to switch sides here it bothers me having that on the other side like that now i have to get rid of the third power what this is you can't do this this is cube right you have to get rid of cube power well you need to do an opposite this is all about opposites right opposite of adding four subtracting four opposite of multiplying by five dividing by five the opposite of the third power is the third root so if you're doing the cube power you have to do the cube root. Well, how the hell do I write that? I don't know how to write this. this. is very complicated. I don't like this. So you put a big ass root and you put the three there. If this had been a five, you'd put the fifth root. If this was a seven, you'd put the seventh root, right? You, in order to do the opposite of that power, you have to do the root of that power. So third power, third root. It's called a cube. So it's a cube root. This is your opposite function. Now, what I said to you in the notes was, once you finish solving for y, take the y and call it f with the little minus one thing. This is the notation for inverse. I'm not going to have a heart attack if you don't do that, but you really should do that. So this is the inverse function. So again, replace f of x with y, switch places with x and y, and then solve for y. Do all the steps you need to do to get y by itself. And again, usually at the end of the problem, you're going to have to take some type of root. Cube root, fifth root, seventh root, they're going to be odd. If this had been even, if this was a two, you wouldn't be able to do this. This is a one-to-one -one function, odd power. So one-to-one -one function has an inverse. If this was even, it would not be one-to-one. -one. You wouldn't be able to find an inverse function at all. 
All right, so second example, much, much more complex. This is a tough function. You know, if I asked you what happens when you plug x in, it would, oh, you multiply it by 2 and then add 1. Oh, wait, you subtract 3. Oh, wait, you divide them. This, is, this, this function is a lot going on here. So what I showed you before with the doing the reverse things would not work on this. So this one, you really have to follow the steps that I put in the class notes really precisely. First, wherever f of x is, you put y. Now you do the big move. Wherever you see y, you put x. And wherever you see x, you put y. So all the x's become y. Now, <laughs> the, the third step was solve for y. And you're like, what the f am I supposed to do? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cross multiply. Now, there's, there's nothing underneath here, right? There's a 1 there. So, whoops. So I'm, I'm going to just take this dude on the bottom and multiply him across over this way. You're like, what the hell is, what, what good does that do? Well, listen, I have to start solving. So the first step of solving should be to get rid of the fraction that you have. So you want, you want the thing on the bottom to be gone. So move it to the other side, right? Cross multiply. There's nothing, there's a one here, so nothing changes. Now I'm gonna distribute the x. You got x times y, then you have minus three times x. And then again, you might be thinking to yourself, what the hell, what is the purpose of this? This still isn't gonna help you figure out what y is. Well, I mean, I'm solving for y. So I think it's a good idea to get all of the y's on the same side, right? And get all of the x's on the other side. So let me, let me move this dude to this side. And let me get rid of this one from that side. So I want to make my trade. I'm going to put the 3x on that side because it doesn't have a y in it. And I'm going to take the dude that has the y and put him on that side. So that's, that's my big move. And then again, I'm going to write 3x plus 1 just so I can keep the x in the front. Now you might be thinking, well, what the hell good did this move do? And then you're like, oh, you can subtract these. Uh, no, you can't subtract them. <laughs> this is xy, and this is minus 2y. These are different creatures. You can't subtract them. Now, this is the point where I would usually stand in front of the board for five minutes trying to make people figure out what the hell to do in this step. The only thing you can do, I can't combine these into one term because if I could, it would be over. So, but what I notice is I have a y here and a y here. And I also know that I can factor out a common term of y. So how do you turn two different y's into one y? Well, you factor. So I'm going to write it again because I'm at a room over there and I want it to be visible. So I'm going to take the y from here and here and I'm going to factor it out into the front, right? Greatest common factor. Y times x, xy. Y times 2, 2y, two right? Negative. So I factor the y out. So I just found a way to take two different things that have y's in it and make it that there's only one y. I factored the common term of y out into the front. Now, this is a product. So I have to do division. I have to divide both sides by x minus 2 to get rid of that. So I will. I'm putting parentheses here to emphasize. You're not crossing out x and x and 2 and 2. So then you get y equals this crap. 3x plus 1 over x minus 2. And then I told you to replace the y with the minus 1 thingy. This time I'm going to write the x there to make it look all pretty and correct. So replace y with the f minus 1, which means inverse. This is the inverse function that you just built. So I'm going to go through the whole thing again because it's, it's complicated. Replace y with f of x. Switch wherever you see y, you put x. Wherever you see x, you put y. And then you have to solve. This, this is really complex to solve for y. Get rid of the fraction first by moving that to the other side. Multiply, right? Cross multiply. Distribute the x. And then everything with a y goes on the left. Everything with an x goes on the other side. Everything without a y, other side. Everything with a y on this side. And then I had to factor the y out of the common terms. These, these are not like terms, you can't combine them. So you factor the y out, 
and then you're just left with this dude with no y, and then you just divide to the other side, and then it's over. So this was the much more complex example of finding the inverse function. All right, and I know I know it's nasty.